Thank you. Welcome, and it's such a, a great pleasure to be here with you again um, and to see such a wonderful turnout. I don't know what I can really say now in the, in the State of the City speech. The testimonials that we just heard from the businesses that were recognized today and the young youth that we have inspires me in terms of that we are doing, I think, the right thing in Concord. We're moving in the right direction. We have businesses locating here, businesses that have been here expanding here, and our youth that are going to have their great businesses here in our community that are already on their way. And it just gives me such great joy to know that the next generation is going to be a great generation here in our community. So thank you to all of you that have come up here and couldn't have said it better myself. So that concludes the State of the City speech. <laughs> no, and on a serious note, I do want to say that, uh, as is mentioned, I have been uh, the mayor several times, as well as a couple of my colleagues uh, in the, and it is a team approach. So. I do want to recognize, that was mentioned earlier when under the introductions, it is a team, and it's the team of the city council that really makes everything happen. And behind the, the team, we have also our city treasurer that keeps our finances going, which is Tim McGallion, who's taken over from uh, our former treasurer, Tom Wentling, who served us many, many years. In addition, we have the support team to the city council. We have our City Manager, our Interim uh, City Attorney, Brian uh, LeBeau, and City Manager, Valerie Baroni, our Police Chief, Guy Swanger, and our Deputy City Manager, Jovan uh, Grogan. And behind them, we have uh, seven department directors. We have 401 full-time employees that are serving you in our community. And with the recession, we've had to make adjustments in our organizational structure, just as many of you have had to do in your business as well. Um, in 2006, we had 510 full-time employees providing services to the community. Through different adjustments and changes, we're still, I think, doing a good job in providing the same service delivery out there with 401 full-time employees. These folks are the nuts and bolts that make our organization great, and I want to thank them for all of the service that they do to not only the city council, but for you in our community. Um, as was mentioned, uh, having a democracy and living in a safe community such as Concord, we need to remember that we do have our veterans that have served us in prior wars, but also in our current conflicts. And we do have recognitions for them in our community, and I don't know if people are aware, but we do have the Koreans War Memorial off of uh, at uh, Hillcrest Park, the Vietnam Memorial up at Newhall Park, the Blue Star Memorial, which is at the Concord Library, and the Gold Star Memorial. And Serving our country, we have lost some of our young leaders that could have been young leaders in our community through the conflicts that we've had in Iraq and Afghanistan. And we cannot forget the sacrifices that our veterans and those that are serving currently in active duty are putting their lives on the line every day for us, both in our country and abroad, to ensure that we have the opportunities that we have, like today, coming together and fostering in a great economy and in a great nation. So, state of the city. You know, I was here before and we were talking about the road to the recovery. Um, that was a few years back. Um, we are now at a point where the recovery has started and we are rethinking, repositioning, and reinventing Concord as we stand forward to move into the new economic era. Uh, we have a lot of Concord firsts. We've also been rethinking the city's budget, repositioning the city after the recession, and reinventing the city for the future. Okay, there it goes. No, it doesn't go. There it goes. As I mentioned, as I mentioned, the city is rethinking, repositioning, and reinventing. And we are conquered. Where we are conquered, where families come first. Some of our other firsts that you may not be aware of is that we're also first in the number of jobs in Contra Costa County. We're first in total sales tax in the county. We're first in sales tax collected in the county. And we're first on the list for growth cities for U-Haul International, which is the number of people that are coming into our community or looking to relocate in our community that are needing the services of U-Haul. Um, more first is that we've had some very new businesses that have op opened up in our community. The first in Northern California for Lazy Dog Restaurant, Lucille's Smokehouse, Caparati's, 
and first in Diablo Valley area for Eureka Restaurant and Jimmy John's Gourmet Sandwiches. And coming soon, we have round one in Sun Valley Shopping Center, which is going to be a restaurant recreation, a rec recreation restaurant environment. Uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a family in entertainment area where it's also a restaurant. So it's kind of a Chuck E. Cheese grown up, I think, on steroids. So we'll see how this works. Uh, it's going to have, I think, beer and wine as well as uh, food a lot of electronic entertainment activities, as well as arcades, bowling, and some other things, and we'll touch on them a little bit later in our program. Other firsts in the city is the Concord Naval Weapons Station Reuse Project. This is the largest infill site in the entire Bay Area. It's gonna have the largest new open space area, and we also have the largest test facility for self-driving cars in a secured environment with the Go Momentum autonomous driving testing facility. And we've been rethinking the city's budget. Measure Q, uh, half-cent sales tax was passed by the voters in 2010. And we had to put that back out to the ballot in 2014 because the recession was longer and deeper than we had expected back in 2010. And this measure will now allow us to have a little bit more time to continue to move forward with economic recovery. And one of the important things to know is our city's general fund is actually the largest portion is made up by sales taxes. 33% or 36% of our budget is sales tax revenue. So business community is very, very important, not only to the city council, but probably less known to our citizens. It's from those funds that we're able to provide service delivery, not only for the residents, but also for businesses in terms of street maintenance, infrastructure maintenance. Property tax is the second with uh, about 24%. And then Measure Q is that temporary sales tax measure, and that provides 13% of our budget right now. And that's where we're hoping that over time we'll be able to be more effective with innovation and efficiencies, as well as new revenue opportunities through economic growth and development that will allow us to uh, close that Measure Q gap that's being provided by the generosity of the voters of Concord. And sales tax overall is about nine cents on the dollar, but you can see where it stacks up in terms of who gets what. The state of California receives the most of that, and then we've got the little bit for BART County uh, Transportation Authority, which helps fund your Measure J, your road improvement projects on a regional basis as well as local. Concord gets uh, one cent is our regular sales tax distribution. And then the half cent is of Measure Q is the temporary tax that the voters elected to have for another 10 years. So on property tax, out of every $100 that residents pay in property taxes, we receive about 10% of that. So a large chunk of your property taxes do go to the state, the school districts, and other entities. That's a slightly higher than a couple years ago by about a dollar. And that increase was because redevelopment went away. And when redevelopment went away, they changed the distribution of the property tax. And so the city of Concord received an additional dollar but lost millions and millions and millions of funds that could have, be, could have been used to reinvest and reinvigorate our redevelopment area, mostly the downtown all the way out to Sun Valley Mall. But we do have top employers in Concord. We are an employment center. Our top employers for 2015 were PG&E, Wells Fargo, John Muir Medical Campus, the B of A Tech Center, yes, they still have jobs there, and Fernicus Medical uh, Care. Statewide sales tax, as I've mentioned, we've had to readjust and rethink our budget, and you can see where we've been. Uh, we hit the tech bubble there in the 2000s. We had the credit bubble in the early 2000s, and then we had the kerplunk of the Great Recession. We've come back, which is the good news. We are in an economic recovery, but you can see that the sales tax has popped and then it's come down a little bit. And it still hasn't been to where it was way back in the 1990s. Believe it or not, we're still operating with less sales tax revenue coming in with a larger community and larger demand on needs. So there are a lot of challenges that the city has and the city council has in order to provide delivery services with the limited resources. And you can see the change over the years in retail sales. Um, the big drop-off 
uh, in the early 2000s with the tech bubble and then the 2008-2009 Great Recession. We've come back in retail sales, but it's been fluctuating. It's up and down. It hasn't been a consistent growth. It's just kind of tapering along on a little bumpy road. Um, this last year, it was slightly down over 2014. And economic expansion, you can see all of the different eras where we've had economic expansion. As I mentioned, we are in an, area, uh, an era of economic expansion. Um, at the federal level, it started a long time ago. At the local level, we're just starting to see it. Everything trickles down, and it takes a little longer. But you can see, according to this slide and this data, since 2009 to today, which is about 77 months, we've seen some sort of economic growth and expansion. However, the cautionary note is that the average economic expansion lasts about 58 months. So this has been a longer period of, than average of economic expansion. And we have to be ready for what happens when there's another downturn in the economy. And we all have to be prepared for that because there are ups and downs as we go forward. The good news is our unemployment rate is continued to drop. Uh, you can see here on this chart where we were back in 2009 and when I spoke to you in 2011, it was just starting to come down, but it was still high. We're now down into the 5%, which is in some economists say is kind of the full employment model because you do have people leaving and coming into uh, jo the job market all the time. So somewhere in the 4 to 5% range is considered full employment. So that's good news in terms of the front, in terms of uh, the unemployment rate. And you can see here where Concord stacks up as it compares to the United States, California, and Contra Costa, and where we were just three years ago. 11.2% unemployment, we're down to just about 4.9% now. So that's good news, it's promising. We have sales tax revenue, as I said, has gone up from where we were, it's just fluctuating along. Home values are the one that we've seen the largest change in. Um, we were all talking about uh, foreclosures and the economy several years back, how many foreclosures were on somebody's block, and how could that be? And now we've seen that the prices are up 13% over last year. And that's good news. It also it brings new challenges because now we have people looking for affordable housing. The students out there from Mount Diablo High in another five, ten years are going to be looking for housing. Where are they going to live? What kind of uh, housing opportunities will we have that will meet the needs for those entering the marketplace? We have an, an enhanced vibrancy in Concord and economic recovery is also seen with our hotel room occupancies that are up. Our general fund has been able to provide some significant funding for some one-time capital projects in this year and going forward into next year. What we're doing is being very frugal with our funds because we're not sure, as you saw in those slides, things are uncertain. There's some uncertainty as we go forward. We don't want to overcommit to new ongoing costs. We want to take care of one-time things, and we've got a long list. You've probably seen it too. Potholes here, like to upgrade some signal lights that have more of the countdown clocks. All of that takes money, and we want to be able to just reinvest in our community in making the best bang for the buck and not undertake long-term ongoing operational costs that could be more impacting should there be another downturn. The good news is also our general fund reserves, which we had pretty much drawn down to about a 12% number, 10 to 12% number, and even lower in a couple of quarters. Uh, we've made that a priority. We've re put funds away in that. To, so our rainy day fund is now at 30% of our budget, which is good news so that we are ready for when another downturn might come. We will be more prepared, and I think everybody's more vigilant about looking further out on the horizon now in the economy than we were many years ago. We listen and we look further ahead than just living in the moment. The Measure Q extension, as I mentioned, expires in uh, 2025, and as I said, we pretty much have a status quo budget. We're taking any excess revenues, and we're really being strategic in how to, how to uh, reinvest those in our community. We have a fiscal sustainability ordinance, and those funds are limited to putting into one-time expenditures for like capital infrastructure, uh, rebuilding our reserve, our rainy day fund, and uh, limiting those to uh, paying down also our unfunded liabilities and healthcare costs for our uh, employees. 
we do have those burdens and the changes with CalPERS and have impacted us as an employer in terms of how much money we have to set aside based upon new actuarials and new changes in accounting procedures that we need to set aside more money to cover those expenses. And the other thing is people are living longer. And the actuarials are showing that people are living longer. And in the old days, you thought you only put along, aside so much money, you have to put it along, uh, along aside a lot more because they are living longer. Our major Q supports our city core services like our police services, our infrastructure maintenance, and our parks and recreation uh, amenities. In the infrastructure maintenance from Major Q, we've taken 22.4 million for road repairs that we're gonna do over the next five years. And we did that by taking basically bonding against some of those tax uh, revenues that would come in in the future so that we could get a big chunk of funds to go out there and make it an economy of scale project where we can go out and do a lot of road projects. That's the great start, that's the great news. The challenge is that we still have at least 90 million more needs in road projects existing today in our community, and we don't have yet the funds for that. The challenges, again, I said, were the unfunded maintenance infrastructure, the long-term liabilities we have for retiree medical and uh, benefits persist, and the CalPERS pension cost adjustments and the future changes that we see on that horizon. So we continue to rethink the budget every year and every half year, because we have a mid-year budget review as well, um, to see where we are and to check in and see what adjustments we need to make. Uh, the general fund, again, relies heavily on Measure Q. There's a gap from that recession that we need to make up. We need to find where those funds are gonna be. Redevelopment, losing that when the state uh, d dissolved all redevelopment agencies was a funding source that we had that provided economic development programs and enhancements in our infrastructure for businesses to locate and to reuse older properties in our community. Um, the other challenge is we've seen some shopping centers improve and update, but others are in need, and we have to find out how we can help them in other areas of our community. And again, the challenge is the state requiring more of us with no funds to achieve it. Again, we're looking to reposition the city after the recession. We have uh, repositioning ourselves because the Chevron site is gonna be repurposed and we have a 30 acre retail center called Center Cal that's being proposed for that property. It does confirm that Concord is a regional shopping destination area. And this would be the first new shopping center in over two decades in our community. And it's very fortuitous that it's right next to the freeway so it can also attract people from beyond the city borders to come in and spend their funds in our community and help us out on that, the funds that we need in tax revenues to provide services for our community. We have now the opportunity of a few properties in our former redevelopment area that are now gonna be made available for us to, per, to go out to the marketplace and make them available for purchase. Uh, the state of California has required this. We were on hold for several years in order to go to this step and they've just allowed us to move forward on this particular venture, and this is gonna be exciting because these properties, some of them you've driven by and said, why isn't anything happening on this? Or people have approached us and said, I'd like to do something on this, and we couldn't do anything. But now we're excited that we have these great opportunities in our downtown, a lot of them close to BART and public transit that would be made available for reuse. We have the Willow Shopping Center who it's reconfigured itself and has a, now a new Main Street access which has created some new active retail space environment which is where Eureka Restaurant fronts. We have Ike's, Ice, uh, Ike's Sandwich Shop and Rick's Ice Cream and Dos Coyotes Border Cafe is coming there. And that center's been reinvigorated and is very active so you can see we are a place to reinvest, to continue to do business as well as uh, prosper in the businesses that are here and coming. Park and Shop has had also some new tenants coming in, and they've been doing some adjustments in their facade as well as funds allow. They've been trying to upgrade some of the appearance of the exterior of that center and reposition themselves to be competitive in the marketplace for retail destinations. We have Bonjour Bakery Cafe, Roberto's Cantina, Rockin' Crawfish, Lulu's Kitchen, and the Steamboat Restaurant, which is Chinese Hot Pot. You can see from that list, you can pretty much dine every day of the week and have some kind of food item that would be from a completely different part of the world. And 
if you don't like that, you got Buffalo Wild Wings not too far away, which is under construction now in the former Marie Callender site on Diamond Boulevard, which is going to be opening this spring. We have the former Peppermill Tachi site on Concord Avenue that many were familiar with. We have three businesses that are uh, opening there. We've got Habitat, or have opened there, Habitat Burger, Noodles Company, Jimmy John's Gourmet Sandwiches. And at Sun Valley Shopping Center, as I mentioned earlier, round one is opening this summer. It's the family entertainment venue offering uh, bowling, billiards, food, beer, wine, darts, arcades, and karaoke. That's why I said it's the old days brought forward and modernized. And the other exciting thing at Sun Valley Mall is a new food court in the lower level that's going to be opening soon. I know I went through there the other day and had to go through the construction zone, but it, I had a throwback. It was on Thursday, so throwback Thursday to the days when we had the international food court down at Sun Valley Mall on the lower level. So you reinvent and you sometimes come back a little bit full circle, but you reposition yourself a little bit different. So just as the business sector is doing that, so is the city in terms of its um, activities. We've tried to freshen up our downtown by putting in new lights on Salvio Street and providing a nice ambiance there, as long as the lights along uh, the park at Todos Santos and the new archways uh, designed by Vice Mayor Ron Leone. Um, but I do like the design, uh, th that identifies Toto Santos Plaza. And this is important because when you get off BART and people are coming to Concord from BART, and we have a lot of activities in Toto Santos that do draw people from BART, you start wandering down uh, Grant Street or Diablo Street, and you're kind of trying to figure out, well, where is the park, or is this the park, and am I at the right spot? So this is really nice because it provides a an entry focal point that identifies where you are, that you have actually gotten to your destination, and fits in very well with the architecture and the design of the uh, downtown Square Park. And those are the tree lights that if you saw it, um, our tree lighting program in December were all finished and we lit, they were all lit up and the tree was lit and it was just gorgeous down there. And then we had an ice cream shop over in the Willows that's opening up, but not to be outdone, Concord, I think, is going to be the ice cream capital of the Bay Area. We now are going to have cream opening downtown on Sal Salvio Street, I believe. Lord's Ice Cream is there, and we have Baskin and Robbins already existing. So you can see that anybody who's an ice cream lover, this is your place to be. And then we've been doing a pilot program with Off the Grid, which is the mobile trucks that have a variety of different types of foods that are different than what you might find in some of our restaurant businesses. And so they're at Toto Santos Plaza on Mondays, and they offer, like I said, a variety of different choices, and they often have different vehicles coming on Monday. So you may not have the same vehicle there consistently all the time, so they do have kind of a change out. But it's kind of nice to go down there and try something and sample maybe a different type of food style that isn't available elsewhere in the area. And Concord, besides the ice cream, if you're into craft beers, we're becoming craft beer central. We've got you know, several new businesses and existing businesses that deal in craft beers. The Black Diamond Brewing Company out in North Concord, BJ's Restaurant and Brew House at Sun Valley Mall, EJ Fairs, on Salvia Street, Epidemic Ales on Mason Circle, on, and then Hop Grenade right there on Salvia Street. And Hop Heavy is going to open downtown on Pacheco Street. Another business that repositions itself, has repositioned itself, uh, that has really helped out the city of Concord, we believe, is the Concord Pavilion. No longer called that something mattress factory pavilion. We are now back to the Concord Pavilion. This provides uh, an opportunity to brand our community. People know where they're going. And I'm just so pleased that the council and with Dan, uh, council member uh, uh, Helix's leadership, they, we were able to convince them to go back to Concord Pavilion, reposition and rebrand, because not only does it help them, it helps out all of the community all of you as businesses as well, gets the Concord name out there in the broader region. And another repositioning um, of the city involves in what's been happening in our planning and building department. Uh, we are at a four-year high right now in terms of the planning activity that's coming through and across our staff's desks. We have received this year 548 applications to last year, 2015, which was a large amount, and you can see there we've got a 15% increase over last year of 2014, 
but yet a 43% increase over 2012. Very good news. Businesses is active. Residential development is active. They're coming in. Things are starting to move forward again. And we have residential projects in the pipeline. Um, the Renaissance Luxury Apartments Phase 2 is just behind Phase 1 that's already built there on Galindo and Concord Avenue. And this will take up the block going further back toward Mira Vista. They're anticipating construction starting in 2016. We have Concord Village, a new planned project for the area that's now a big vacant lot uh, on Willow Pass, East Street, Salvia Street, Port Chicago Highway. It's 230 units. And they're also planning to start in 2016. And then we have mostly a built-out community outside of the downtown properties. So what do you do for the infill areas? Well, the infill areas are mostly seeing some smaller single-family projects being built. And that is one here, just an infill area where it's very challenging, even though there's a small number of units being proposed. They're always being put into an existing neighborhood areas where people have been there 20, 30, 50 years. I thought this was going to be all open space forever. What do you mean a neighbor's going to move in? So it's a very big challenge, and it takes a lot of time with our Planning Commission Design Review Board often to meet the needs of the neighbors with the developer and try to blend in new projects with the older neighborhood area. And the other challenge is, of course, new families aren't looking for often 10 20,000 square foot lots to maintain. They're looking for something that's a little bit smaller and it has more square footage on the inside of the home. So the style of the homes, trying to blend them in, is a big challenge and that's what we're seeing happening in our community. The residential construction market is also coming back, which is good news. And then, for the more mature adult in our community, we have the Oakmont Senior Living uh, Project that's been approved on Civic Court and this will provide uh, senior living amenities, and the two, I mean, I just at Montecito the other day, their wait list is a minimum six months to almost a year. So you can tell our, as we know, our senior population is a growing population. Um, we're living longer, and the population in our community is aging, and we need to find opportunities for that segment of our community to stay in our community and to be able to be close to their families, close to the areas they know, and more importantly as well, close to the fine medical facilities that we have in our community. Again, we're reinventing Concord for the future. We have taken steps already with the downtown specific plan being created and adopted. We're underway with the bicycle, pedestrian, and safe routes plan, which will help Again, reinvent Concord for the future, integrating more bicycle and pedestrian linkages to our community as we go forward. And of course, we have the Concord Naval Weapons Station Reuse Project. The whole project site there is the community's uh, reuse plan, and we're moving forward on that, and there's some exciting times ahead, and it's right next to the North Concord BART Station. What a great future development opportunity for our community and our region to be able to have development right next to a BART station. This is probably the only site on the BART lines that has cows grazing next to the parking lot that's there now. You know, that's not the best use of public transit. And by providing that land for new development, we will be able to take advantage of public transit and new growth and development opportunities in our community. And the challenges for the council is integrating that to our existing community so that we don't make two Concords. Right now, I will tell you with the base reuse, we have many years to go on this process once it even starts in terms of any development activity in the future. You can see here what the population projection is with their base reuse. We will grow, Concord will continue to grow, but it will be growing at a metered rate so that we hopefully will be able to adjust and make accommodations for the areas that are coming online into the rest of our community. Where are we in the process? The master developer is going to be selected in the next couple of months. We have two master developer finalists that are moving forward in that, and other aspects are moving forward as well. We have the Navy completing its environmental impact statement, and Honda is now self-driving, is doing their autonomous vehicle testing at the Go Momentum station out there as a temporary activity. The exciting news is that property, 70% of that area is going to be parkland and open space. Uh, 
The East Bay Regional Parks District is looking at taking on the open space area. They're underway now with the master plan process with the community receiving input. And the proposed working name right now for the area is the Concord Hills Regional Park. I think they have a name contest going as well or suggestions that they're taking for other names on this process. And where is that as it relates to the base? 70% is a large part of the property. It's mostly the hill area and the area south of Bailey Road. Um, the rest of the property is the area that would be developed more with housing, active parks, and the city's uh, and uh, office environment. The Concord Hills Regional Park would be 2,500 acres, and it's planned to be a world-class regional park. And you can see there uh, where they're at, and they're working with the, the East Bay Parks District is working not only with the city, but the National Park Service on creating a joint visitor center, which would highlight the Port Chicago area on the very north side of the base, out by the waterfront, that is not accessible now to the public. So they're looking at creating something that would be accessible all the time for our community area. And the process is they're moving forward with public comment this spring and environmental review. And then the master plan they hope to be done in 2016, which would hopefully coincide with the opportunity for them to receive that property from the Navy. And we also are reinventing our city in recreation activity areas. We've got Baldwin Park, new tot lot equipment. Ellis Lake, we have restrooms and playground equipment going on. Meadow Homes is planned for a new tot lot. We just talked about that at our Tuesday council meeting and are moving forward with that. And Center Concord on Tuesday just was recently had its re-grand opening. It's been refurbished. It has the new movable wall partitions have been upgraded, the coverings, the ADA access. And I know there's a chamber function coming up there pretty soon, so you'll be able to see all that when we do the, it's not crab feed, is it? Yeah, it's, it's the feast feed, whatever we're, Seafood, seafood fast feed. I know it wasn't crab. So I've been up here a few times, and I just wanted to kind of highlight real quickly what's happened in our community as we've gone forward over these last several years. In 2009, it looked like we were turning off the lights due to financial constraints. The light at the tunnel will be turned off until further notice. In 2011, things were starting to stabilize. They weren't improving, but they had not dropped any further and we were starting to maybe see a light at the end of the tunnel. In 2012, we were starting to see kind of the recession winding down, a little bit of a recovery starting, but it had these twists and turns in it. We weren't sure where it was going. Fits and starts, stops and starts. And then in 2014, it was starting to get a little smoother. We could see things starting to move a little bit forward consistently, but we had to have patience and perseverance because it was slow. It's been slow in 2014. 2015, as you saw the statistics, things are starting to happen. And in 2016, the question is, you know, we've been in a bumpy road, but the bumps are smoothing out. The economic road we're on now is new and different. We're in different times and in a more global and interconnected economy. And with that, Concord is well positioned. It's been rethinking itself, repositioning itself to be a part of that interconnected uh, economy. And uh, I do want to say at your chairs, you had a sh flyer that showed different milestones in economic recovery as to what stimulated it, one of the stimulations to it over all the decades. And you can see there um, different types of businesses that were created that are now commonplace to us that we hadn't even thought about the year before it was created. And I didn't even add to that list that Lyft and Uber, which is part of our acronym and language every day to day wasn't around really five, six years ago. Five or six years ago, there was no Uber or Lyft. And now look at where they are and how they've changed our society, how they've changed our economy, how we go about not only business but in our personal life. So there's a lot of exciting things happening in Concord. We are, like I said, um, an exciting place to do business, as was heard earlier today, to stay and grow your business. As to, well, if you're not here already, locate your business here. And I want to also again thank our city employees that are the nuts and bolts behind the scenes that make all of this happen for you and the Greater Chamber of Commerce as well for putting on this event uh, this afternoon. And I thank you again and have a great afternoon.